So, you want to make a map for your next campaign? Well, how do you do it so that you're not wasting your time making a map that your players are never going to encounter because they decided to go somewhere else? This is how. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and today we're talking about making maps with dual functions. And part of the reason why we're going to do this is because of a new approach to GMing which I've been espousing now on this channel for the past month or so. And uh, you can go and check out all of those videos that kind of lead up to this point. I suggest you do that before you actually start watching this video. Now, this video is sponsored by Dungeon Fog, dungeonfog.com. Use the code GREATGM to get a massive discount if you sign up for a subscription. Why would you want a subscription? Well, every three months they release a new pack of assets. They have over three and a half thousand assets now, from Elvish to Orcish to modern day to sci-fi to steampunk to you name it. They have got assets to make the most beautiful maps. Now we're using them today because, well, we're talking about map making and it kind of makes sense. Go check them out, dungeonfog.com. Right, so when we look at designing a map, there are three things that we need to do to make sure that the map is useful to us, not just for this game, but for future games as well. Now, how can we have... I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to stay here. All right, so this is what we need to, to, to do. These are the three things. They need to have a function. They need to entrench certain things, and they need to give us options. Okay, three very, very basic fundamental things. Now, if you like the idea of having three things in your in your map, hit that like button. I, I don't know. I mean, we're supposed to come up with these things. I mean, I say we're supposed to, right? But the whole engine behind YouTube is, is insane, and we want our videos to reach as many people as possible because, well, from the feedback we get from you guys, people enjoy our videos. So hitting that like button causes YouTube to share it with more people, apparently. That's that's what I've been told by the goblin, and I'm like, okay, all right, fine. Okay, so let's get on with it. Right, when we talk about the function of a map, a map needs to serve a very specific function. And the function is geography. It shows us the geography. It shows us the layout of a particular area that is complex or requires the PCs to understand the layout of the area. So this means, for example, that if it's just an open field, do we need to show the geography? No, we don't. If there is nothing in this field that the PCs could make use of or to utilize during combat, why do you need to make a map? Simply draw it on a piece of paper. You don't have to go to any effort or any length to create this beautiful map of a beautiful field that the PCs are literally just going to be moving around on in a flat environment. So the geography is the most important part of a map. If it's not showing something that the PCs need to see, why are you showing it in the first place? It then needs to give us the layout of that area from a tactical perspective. This is a role-playing game. Now, whether you are playing Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder or Starfinder or doesn't matter, whatever it is you're playing, your players will want to move into advantageous positioning. Sometimes, that's some players. Some players just don't care and will just charge in and try to kill everything in their path. That's fine too. And realize that if you have players who are like that, you don't have to worry about maps. They're going to run in anyway, regardless of the situation, and just try and slaughter everything. So what's a map going to be doing? It's going to take up your time and waste your life. There's no point in doing that map. On the other hand, if your players are tactical and they like to take advantage of things and they like, they like, they like to, to work out, okay, well, we can go in here or we can go in there or, or et cetera, et cetera, then the layout becomes important. And that means that we have to design a layout to do that ex specifically. And I'm going to show you an example in a little, a, little, a little moment. Now, we also need to show the contents of that space. So if the contents are important, it could be giant tentacles are in the water and we can then see the reach of those giant tentacles around a water uh, trap or whatever it might be. That's important for us to show to our players. If there are spikes on the walls, that's important for us to show our players. If there are old abandoned boxes or crates or chests around the walls, etc., etc. That can be important to show our players. Again, we have to make sure the geography is useful first before we start looking at all these sub sort of categories within the, the function of the map. And then of course we need to look at the positioning of the creatures on our map. Now 
far too often we create these maps where we've got our creatures in the perfect position for this combat. It's an ambush. That's fine. If it's an ambush, then they had time to plan for it. But if it isn't an ambush, those creatures shouldn't just charge in and immediately attack the players. They should go, hang on a moment. Remember, we had a plan for this area. We're going to go into our planned positions first before we engage. So they're going to try and delay. And do you see how the map is now informing the role play? Because again, the monsters had a plan they're going to try and follow that plan and try and get into position before they start their combat so they might try and negotiate or talk it makes a much more tense sequence okay so that's function your map and, and so let's have a look at a dungeon map that has no function so this map here it is a large square room we can see that we can see that it's got some cobwebs in the corners and it's got some crates uh, stacked to the one side but that's it it's a large empty room and there are three exits one at each on each wall from the entrance that the players came in on this map has no function why do we need to even draw this map out it, 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 it doesn't give us anything However, if we now add in the middle of this room a, let's say, uh, let's add in this rectangular pond and let's add in um, this um, set of tentacles reaching out of this pond and we can see those tentacles can reach to sort of the halfway mark around the room and we can see that there are some barricades that have been set up on the one side of the room so that archers can fire over those barricades. Now, suddenly, this, this map has function it has a reason for us to be able to look at this map and go aha this exit is blocked because of these things in front of it this exit is open that exit is open and etc etc et so this is a functional map versus a non-functional map before we leave functional maps something that's very important to bear in mind is that no structure he said realizing he was wrong instantly no structure is normally built without a function so if you are designing a sewer, the sewer must have a function, and that function is to direct sewage and water and rainwater and stormwater, etc., etc., to a central outlet pipe or to multiple central outlet pipes, and it has to control the flow of water using cisterns so that the water doesn't turn into this giant tsunami as it is exiting the sewer. So that's the function of a sewer. So your room has to have a functional reason. Why did they build it? Was it a warehouse? Was it a dungeon? And a very specific reason for that dungeon. We need to kind of deep dive into that. And if you don't know how these things looked or how they should look, go and reference real world buildings. I guarantee you, if you type, if you type in and you go dungeon, uh, French castle, they will show you the layout of these rooms. And they are oftentimes crazily small, tight, confined spaces because it costs so much money to make them and to 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 create them but they will have a function and you can go and find that function and learn and add it to your arsenal of map making skills anyway let's move on to number two entrench your map has to entrench your themes your tone uh, your goals of your game hopefully you have a goal to your adventure hopefully you have a theme hopefully you have a tone if you watch the other videos that i've been talking about in the last five videos or so you need to have those nice and neat and put into your map you need to reveal that how do we how do we do that well, quite specifically, let's say that our tone is grim dark. It's this dark space. So if we go back to that map room that we had already originally created, where we've got the trap with the tentacles and that, 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 how do we make that grim dark? Let's throw some blood around and let's make the map really dark. Grim dark. There we go. We've expressed that straight across. It's now this weird kind of haunting space. On the other hand, if we want to say that our tone or our theme is actually comedic, well, then maybe we want to change it so that it's brightly lit so we can see everything that's going on and we can see some potential comedic moments happening by, let's say, having some barrels that are open uh, so people could fall into those barrels. The tentacles maybe are not going to be grasping tentacles, but they're going to be brightly colored tentacles because the tentacle creature is amorous. I, I don't know. It's entirely up to you. But your map must entrench your goals and your themes. This is about reinforcing your world space as the GM. And number three is options now 
we have to provide options to our players. In the example that we've been doing of this single room with four entrances, or one entrance and three exits, that doesn't give our players options. It does not give us height. It does not give us uh, escape routes that are easily accessible or an alternative path around the tentacle space. We want to have multiple layers. We want things to have depth so that our players can go from an overlooking balcony, swing across the entire thing and get to the other side without ever touching the ground. But if they fall into the gap between the two levels, they are now in the tentacle space. So now this map has become very dynamic. But we also want to make it dual purpose. And that means that if we create this dungeon and we say, okay, well, this is the look and feel if we do it this way. If we create to the side of that room, we create another section of the map, which could perhaps be twisting corridors, or I prefer to have it as some kind of natural thing. We now have, let's say, a swamp on the outside. So I've created one map where I've got this room, and then the door opens to the outer side, which is now the swamp-like environment. Let's say, for example, the players now journey into our world and they go into a swamp. I can now bring this particular map up and use that swamp. They don't ever see the building that is attached to it, unless you want them to, in which case they can now step into that space. Alternatively, if they are in that room and you open up the door to the right and they now go into the swamp, that might not make sense because you might have pos posited that this room is in a dungeon inside a mountain range. Why would there be a swamp? So that door is simply blocked in with rubble and they can never get to the other side of it. This way you're creating one map that has potentially multiple functions, but you can use different pieces of it in different parts of your adventure and different parts of your campaign. And also you've now created a map and let's be honest, to add on a few extra little spaces on either side is not going to take you that much time. You've already kind of committed the time to creating a map anyway. You now have this dual functioning map that shows players height differences, it shows them tactical options, it shows them the layout of the room, it shows them objectives that they could try and achieve, plus the things in it that they could use to tactically, uh, to, their, to their advantage tactically. You now have a map that is actually useful and that is not specific just to the adventure that you're creating, so that if the players deviate and they don't go on the adventure that you had kind of anticipated they would go on, you can now use that map elsewhere. That's my thoughts on how to make maps that work for you. So my, I beg your pardon, I have an eyelash somewhere. Um, my suggestion to you now is take maps that exist in real life. Go and look at some architectural designs from the Renaissance era, from the medieval era, even Roman architecture as well. Look at how those functional spaces were created and look at how they played with height and depth to create senses of grandeur. If you can, go and have a look at a cathedral. A cathedral is an amazing structure, even a, a, a slightly large church, for example, that it is effectively a big room, but it is so much more than a big room. There are different height levels, there are balconies, there are choir galleries, there are different levels, there are archways, there are side columns and uh, trans apps and, and all kinds of amazing names for all of the different areas um, within a a church or a structure, go and explore, absorb, learn, and adapt it to your own map making. And until next time, a massive, massive, massive thank you to uh, all of our Patreons who have, have uh, been supporting the channel for so long, and of course to Dungeon Fog for allowing us to create these amazing, beautiful maps in Dungeon Fog, and then reuse them by simply deleting assets and adding in new ones, making it a lot more of a dynamic resource than just creating them by hand, in my opinion. Anyway, big thank you to them, and of course a thank you to you for watching all the way until the end. Until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.